Hi everyone, welcome to The Pen Habit. My name is Matt Armstrong and I'm glad to have you back for another video. Today we're looking at a pen, another brand that is a first time brand for me, one that I've never used their pens before, kind of excited about. Uh, and it was a brand that was brought to my attention by a YouTube viewer, and I apologize, I can't remember who it was right off the top of my head, who asked me if I had any experience with this brand. I hadn't, I hadn't even heard of them. So I looked them up and uh, found out it's an interesting brand. And, I, and then it so happened that Fountain Pen Hospital in New York was having their big uh, pen annual pen frenzy, and I bought one up at a, a pretty good price. So I thought I would walk you through the pen now. So this is the box that comes in. Uh, the pen is a Crone from the, the company Crone, which is an American-based company that uh, is named after its president and founder, Robert Cronenberg. So the pen comes in this lilac cardboard sleeve, the box does. It comes with this uh, registration certificate, which you can fill out and send in. I have not done that yet, but I need to. Uh, the, the dealer didn't put a stamp on that, so I might have to contact Fountain Pen Hospital. Just make sure that they uh, they know. So this is the box that comes in. It's a really hefty, high quality box. Uh, opened the pen. It's magnetized. Opens up, and inside you find this lovely little pen. So it's kind of a um, kind of a faux suede interior. It says Crone in silver embossed lettering, and then this is the pen. This is the Crone Continuum Atmosphere. The blue version is called the Atmosphere. Now, Crone is an interesting brand. It is a, a brand of very expensive pens, most of them uh, well over $1,000. Uh, now, I, I know it probably doesn't seem like it, but I kind of have my own personal limit for how much I am able or willing to spend on a pen, and most Crone pens are far, far outside that limit. Uh, many of them are very flashy, some would even say gaudy. Uh, they are often hand-painted, so each unit is a little bit unique. Um, very limited editions, that sort of thing. The, the Continuum appears to be part of their kind of traditional line, or their, their production line of pens, if you will. So it's still not a, a super cheap pen, and before you bother asking me what the price is, there's this great website I want to tell you about called Google, where you can type it in, K-R-O-N-E, and look it up. Uh, <laughs> not to be snotty about it, but I get that question a lot. And it's one of the questions that kind of makes me roll my eyes a little bit, because pens are priced differently in different markets. Uh, what, what I got it for isn't necessarily what you're going to be able to get it for. So I don't often talk about pen prices, especially over a certain point, because you can get deals. There, there are different... Uh, exchange rates, there's VAT tax or not VAT tax, and different countries have different pricing schemes. So if you're really curious about the price, you can go look it up on Google. It's uh, Google's a great tool, not to, be a, not to be a smart ass about it, but there you go. Um, really pretty pen, and quite unlike anything I have ever seen before. Uh, this is, as I mentioned, more of a production line pen. Uh, it is far, it was, you know, under... I think I paid under $300, but I don't remember right off the top of my head. Uh, but not anywhere near the $12,000, $15,000, $2,000, $2,500 mark that some of their pens do. And if you go to the Crone website, you can actually see uh, some of their, their higher-end lines available there. Um, so let's walk through the pen here. Starting off at the top, nice flat top of this pretty blue acrylic. Very rich color, very shimmery, some nice chatoyance there. Uh, you know, some swirliness, but it's not too flashy. The acrylic isn't. The uh, solid acrylic all the way down to this brass band with the, the lines in it. Then you've got a very hefty, but still springy clip. Nice, chunky cast clip. Uh, it's got the crone, crown logo, and kind of a rope motif around the outside of the clip. Uh, nice, nice solid clip. I actually like the look of that clip quite a bit. Then down the rest of the pen, you've got these sections of acrylic which get increasingly smaller as you go down the pen, which is, I suspect, where the name Continuum comes from, which comes to a brass finial down here on the end. I'll be back to this in just a little bit. There's, there's a bit of a story behind that. Uh, the, the cap is 
the threads on the cap are very smooth, just super, super smooth, very well machined and with no slack at all in them. Pull the cap off, you've got the acrylic threads and a washer, little brass washer here, and then the, th the section tapers down. It is a cartridge converter pen using standard international cartridges and converters. So this is not the converter it came with. And the reason it is not the converter it came with is because the converter it came with was a piece of garbage. Uh, it, it, it kind of fell apart. It got ink behind the, the piston. I couldn't get it apart. And then it kind of fell apart and it was, it was kind of a mess. Fortunately, I've got more standard international converters f sitting around my house than I know what to do with. So throwing another one in here was not a problem. This is also the Caveco standard international full-size converter is a little shorter than a lot of standard international converters, which is a good thing in this pen. Um, and, and now's probably as good a time as any to show you why. So one thing I found interesting about this pen is, you know, I really like these, these brass bands in the acrylic, but because of that, this pen really, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> It's, it's interesting. So for some reason that I've been yet to figure out, at the very end of the pen, the cap comes off and you can see right through the barrel. Now this is, this would be great if this were piston filler, but it's a cartridge converter pen. So because of that, it makes it a little more difficult to use the, um, to use this as an eyedropper, not that I would recommend that anyway. But the bigger problem, and I'm actually going to take the section off before we get to talking about the nib, is that the pen posts, and it posts really securely, So, but I made the mistake of trying to get it to unpost and in so doing, twisting. So I tried to twist it off like this. Well, because the back of the pen acts like a piston, it, you know, it doesn't, you don't want to do that. Now, normally that is not the biggest problem in the world because I don't post my pens. But in the case where I did post this pen, I also happen to have the original full-size converter in here. And when I twisted the back of the finial, it twisted the converter and sprayed ink all over my hands. So uh, <laughs> just a, a little design note, if you're going to make a cartridge converter pen, there's really no need not to cement the end finial in place to keep that from happening. Just, it was just a little pet peeve of mine. So you have to be careful with this pen not to, uh, not to spray ink all over your hands if you're the kind who feels the need to post the pen, which I am not. Okay, back to the nib. So a uh, uh, got an 18 karat gold nib here with the Crone logo and a cup, you know, a little kind of swoopy design on the top. It's a, it's a bicolor nib. So you've got the, the gold and then the, the silver color plating there. I don't know if that's... Uh, ruthenium or silver or what, I assume it's ruthenium, uh, not ruthenium, rhodium. Uh, and then it says Crone 18K M. You can see that there. And uh, this is a, a plastic feed, but it's not quite like any of the other plastic feeds that I have seen lately. So it uh, looks like it may be either a feed from a different company, they don't get their nibs made by Yovo, or they requested a custom feed, something along those lines. In any case, uh, we can talk measurements here. So the pen is, when capped, a nice chunky 141. It's a, it's a big size pen, it's 141 millimeters. It's 123 when uncapped, so still long enough to be used unposted. And then, it, as I mentioned, it does post. It posts to 163. I don't find this pen very super well balanced when it's posted. Um, the main reason being that this end finial here is all metal and quite heavy. So when you add a, a heavy finial on the end of the pen, as well as a heavy cap on the end of the pen, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. In terms of diameters, you're looking at about 11.3 millimeters in the center of the section. Widest point of the barrel is 14.5, and the widest point of the cap is 15.9. So it's a decent sized pen. It will be a little heavier than your traditional all acrylic pens because there is a fair bit of metal on here. So you're looking at 22 grams posted or 22 grams unposted, unposted or uncapped, and that's with a converter and with ink in it. 
And if you add the cap, it is a total of 32. So the cap adds another 10 grams to that weight. So really a lovely, unique pen. I've never seen a design quite like this. It's, it's a nice looking pen. Uh, it, it harkens to a, a kind of a classical, traditional design, but in unique materials and and with some, some unusual features that you don't see very often. So if you're looking something for a little off the beaten path, this may be one you want to look at. So let's go ahead and do a writing sample. I'll show you how it writes um, and one little problem I had with the writing, and then I will uh, finish up and tell you, tell you how I feel about the pen in general. So here we have the, you'll notice it's a hard start, and I'll talk about that in a second. Crone continuum. Double U's in words are so hard for me in cursive. Atmosphere. And we are looking at an 18 karat gold medium nib. And the ink for today is Diamine Oxblood. Really lovely ink. Okay, let me go ahead and do the writing or the little quote sample for you. All right. Now, I, I hope you can hear that. Uh, when I did the writing sample, this is a, a pretty noisy nib. It writes well. It writes actually quite well, but it's not very smooth. It's got a, a lot of feedback to it. It's not necessarily unpleasant feedback, but it is more than I generally care for in my nibs. So if you're someone who really likes that feedbacky feel and likes to hear the kind of the scritch of a nib across paper. It's not scratchy at all. It's just feed, very feedbacky. Um, I will probably smooth this nib out uh, a little bit. I haven't yet because I wanted to review it in its original form before I did anything to it. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out really quickly is up here on this K, and you'll notice it even now, this pen dries out really fast. Um, even with the cap on, it doesn't stay wet. So almost every time I pick the pen up, I have to kind of scribble over a spot to get the ink flowing again. Once the ink's flowing, it's just fine. But if I stop writing for 20, 30 seconds, anything like that, the pen kind of dries out. Now, to be fair, this could very well be a an issue with the ink. Uh, Diamine's Oxblood and Ancient Copper and some of those reddish, orangish inks tend to kind of gunk up. You know, you get uh, nib creep and it kind of crystallizes on the outs on the top of the nib. Um, so it may be an issue with Diamine Oxblood. This is the only ink that I've had in this pen. But once it gets going, it, it's a great, great uh, writer. It, I don't have any problems with starvation, hard starts, skipping, any of that kind of thing. It's just pretty feedbacky. As for uh, wetness, it is, I'd say, on the wet side of moderate. Um, it's not a gusher, and it certainly, I mean, right after it inks, like as, as in most cases, it can be a pretty wet pen. Um, on long writing sessions, it will tend, it's not ink starvation, but the feed does have just a little bit of a hard time keeping up. So it will get a little bit drier as you write long writing sessions. Uh, I made it through about two and a half pages of writing when I was doing the handwritten draft of the review before I noticed that, uh, that it was a little drier than it had been when I started. At no point did I have to prime the feed at all and, uh, and use the, the piston on the converter to get it to write. So it, it, it held up to long writing well. Uh, it just, really my only complaint is that that hard start you initially get 
when you haven't been using the pen for a little while, but that's just a really minor thing. Uh, in terms of the line variation of the nib, uh, you can actually push the line variation a fair bit. This, this nib does have a little bit of spring to it. Not a lot, but I mean, you can see, you can, you can get a little bit of variation here, but because the feed is not really built to do this kind of writing, you can, if you push it too far, you can get a little bit of the railroading there. Again, you can see, uh, not a bad bit of line variation if you go slowly and don't push too hard. Um, other than that, it does have a slightly stubbish quality to the nib, even though it's only a medium. You'll notice the line variation. There's a fair bit between the downstrokes and the cross strokes. The cross strokes are a little bit drier and quite a bit narrower. Um, if I decide to smooth this nib, that may go away just a little bit um, because I suspect some of the feedback may be from slightly sharper corners than I would generally prefer out of a pen. In terms of reverse writing, it writes pretty well. Um, again, it's feedbacky, but it's not really scratchy. Uh, so they probably I either got really lucky or they did some work. And it's uh, it's a pretty consistent, very fine line, but pretty consistent ink flow there. So, um, how do I feel about the Crone Continuum Atmosphere? There's no denying it's a unique pen, and it's a very attractive pen. Um, I've never seen anything quite like it, and, and I like that a lot. I really love the color. I think the color is quite beautiful, and I really like the brass rings, the design. Um, clip is kind of interesting. So aesthetically, I like the pen. For some reason, I can't quite put my hands on. It is not the most comfortable fit in my hand, and I suspect it is because Generally speaking, I like to hold my pen a little bit higher up than down on the section. On this pen, I really can't because the threads and then there's a step up right here. Um, it, it doesn't feel comfortable to hold it higher up. And the pen tends to write a, like a slightly higher angle. So I generally tend to write it around a 45 degree angle. This pen tends to like something a little bit north of that, a little bit closer to 50, 55 degrees, um, which is not the angle at which I normally write. Now, this is getting really, really nitpicky. I, and it's not that, you know, it's not bad by any stretch of the imagination. But at no point in writing with this particular pen did, it, did I just kind of sit in my hand and feel like it belonged there, like I've gotten with some of my other pens. I really like it. I'm sure I could get used to the way this one writes. I already have started to get used to it. Um, I think this is one I'm going to keep. I haven't decided if I'm going to sell it or if I'm going to keep it yet. But it's it's right on the edge of am I going to if I if I keep it I'll work on the nib a little bit, smooth it out. Uh, if I don't, I probably won't. But uh, man, I like this pen and I like that it's unique. Uh, I've never I've never seen another Crone pen in in real life. Uh, a lot of their higher and pricier pens, I find to be a little gaudy, even for me. Um, and and they're they're treated. I, I see them more like works of art that you put on display than pens you would use on a day to day basis. I just I can't see myself even as a desk pen using a twenty five hundred dollar pen on a daily basis. That's just not that's not for me. Um, but that being said, I think that. Crone has some really interesting things going on. There's certainly a design aesthetic and a thought about design that is unique and very different from anything else that's out on the market. So that is my review of the Crone Continuum Atmosphere. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below, or even better, head over to penhabit.com. The link is down in the, in the description below, and leave your comments over there. Uh, and... Yeah, if you've had an experience with Crone pens, let me know. It's one that I just, I don't know a lot about them. I've spent some time on their website. Uh, I have seen the offerings that are out there, uh, but it's a brand you don't hear a lot about. So if you've got your own experiences, I would love to hear about them. That should do it for this review. 
As always, if you have questions or comments, you can email me penhabit at gmail.com or head over to penhabit.com and click on the contact link over there. And also, as always, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Bye.